All right, I'm gonna go over. Um, this was I think it was crude, and how it turned. Um, it's just a minor turn. All right, so on the daily, it's going up. As you can see, there's a clean breakout, goes up. All right, that's not rocket science. There's all these resistance, it breaks out. Bigger volume, follow through. So obviously, it's broken out. Okay. Here's the level to watch. Why? Because that's where pressure increased. Here, it was tested, but this area wasn't. Anyway, the so market should be coming back to that area. On the lower time frame or on the lower brick size, I'm going to identify show how the 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 turning point occurred. You have eight thousand and four thousand. First, let's take a look at the thrusts. The thrust you can't really tell anything other than it expanded a lot right here, right? It expanded a lot right here. It's not the biggest thrust. It's not the biggest thrust, but it expanded. Okay. So that's all you can say. It expanded. But look at that. This price is the biggest wave in like 49 waves. I mean, that's all I'm tracking. So, I mean, it's huge. The wave, side, the wave relative to the prior waves is massive. But still, you don't know. It could still continue higher, you know. But, we, so right now, it's like, okay, is this a climax or not? Here, we know that there's a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of volume, but a lot of price action is the biggest 49 waves, biggest so far. What helps you decide is the secondary test. The secondary test, what you notice relative to the first one, is that it's almost the same amount of volume, yet it's only two bricks. The one before that is 12 bricks and 24,000. But fine, it has a lot of zeros and stuff like that, right? So, um, even if you look in the back background, 10 bricks, 4,000. So 4,000 volume yielded 10 bricks. 26,000 volume yielded 7 bricks. How is it that 23,000 is only yielding two bricks? The Cephal reward right there. 23,000 volume yielded two bricks and then went lower. So you have a secondary test. It shows low volume, but there's also effort reward in there. Why? Because you just compare 23,000 does two bricks of progress. Whereas before 26,000, it's seven bricks. Two bricks, seven bricks. So just as a reference point, you understand that there's something not quite right. All that volume, yet two bricks. And it has to do with this brick right here, this heavy, heavy volume brick. Anyway, from my perspective, what I'm really looking for is that climax and a secondary test. Oh, getting lost in the volume, you know, you don't want to get lost in the volume. So I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. All I know is that it's a secondary test. And then after that, you have one attempt, two attempt, three attempt, none. So you have multiple attempts here clearly indicating to you what? Demand is exhausted. How do you know? Look at the amount of movement after that climactic wave one. There are four attempts. Each attempt is one or two bricks, whereas the climax was 12 bricks. What does that mean? It means demand has no pulling power whatsoever. It has no pulling power. It can... There's no pressure from demand. Still, 
supply has to prove itself. And it finally does by breaking these lows. I'm not sure if this is the breakout, but I don't remember. 50, 26. I mean, I had a breakout here, but it was already tested, so. Anyway. Um, you had a breakout right there against this level, and it got tested. Right? So, what what are some things to notice? Some things to notice is there was a lot of attempts to go up, but they, they failed. So, this is cause. You call it distribution, you call it whatever, but I see it as one test, two test, three test, four test, it's not going anywhere. It has to go down. And this had a lot of volume. 191, back 192, still not working. And it goes against it, which means these buyers are whoever's trapped. Um, and then after that, breaks again on this breakout, and it tests a breakout, and goes down. So, what can I say? All I can say is you have it good on, on good volume. Is there any chance of a reversal here? Like, is there any evidence? The thrusts are increasing not decreasing the volumes are the higher stupid cat anyway so the volume is uh, higher uh, where is it here 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 there is some volume that came over here but what is that I don't know what that is 393 this, I guess there's a lot of volume probably because this was a level so buyers did step in that you got to be careful about they did step here because this was an untested level it went here and the buyers came they got stuffed at resistance tested resistance now it's going back down on the same amount of volume there you go this uh, size here one two three four five six it's the biggest in six waves. It's not not impressive. I don't see any reason why this market will not continue going lower, at least on the short term chart. In this minor little trend piece, there's no evidence for of a reversal. It's zilch. The thrusts are getting bigger. The volumes are getting bigger. The size of the waves are bigger. I mean, how are you going to have a reversal? Obviously, in an uptrend, the up waves are bigger than the down waves. Over here, the down waves are bigger than the up waves, so it's a downtrend. You cannot trend means it's going up or down. The only way it can go up is if up waves are bigger than the down waves. This is mathematically impossible for anything else to create an uptrend. The up waves must be greater than the down waves. What does that mean? It means there's more demand has more pulling power. Uh, and in the vice versa, in downtrends, the down waves must be bigger than the than the up waves. So uh, you just keep seeing that behavior of the down waves being bigger than the up waves. What does that mean? It means that the trend is down. Why down waves are bigger than the up waves? A corollary to that is that the volume on the down waves is also bigger than the up waves in a downtrend, and the volume in an uptrend is more on the up waves and the down waves bottom line the up waves in an uptrend have more price and volume than the down waves and in a downtrend the down waves have more price and volume than the up waves so this is trend and this is like a fact right i don't know how else to explain it but that's the only way you can go from point a to point b where point B is higher in an uptrend or lower in a downtrend. There's no other way to do it. So, right here, do you see like the up waves getting bigger? Right here, this up wave is bigger, but the down waves are still bigger than the up waves. So, until that changes, um, I can't really see a reversal. The other thing to mention is in an uptrend, it, in, in, 
in an uptrend, you say the up waves are bigger than the down waves. You can also say the down waves are shorter than the up waves. It's like the same thing, but in a different way, and where it's focused on the down waves being shorter instead of focusing on the up waves being bigger. So, for example, here, you had the up waves shorten. And I'm not talking about shortening the thrust yet, but the up waves are shortened. You see? The up waves are shortened. The up waves are smaller than the down waves. So, that's what typically happens. Sometimes you won't see, you know, everything. You won't see, oh yeah, down waves have are bigger than the up waves and have more volume and they're the biggest in X number of waves and they're breaking support but you'll get other clues what is the clue here you had a climax so it's 12 bars then you had four tests all four showed that the up waves were shrinking which is an indication of a possible turn in trend because the up waves are getting smaller and the down waves are starting to increase in size. That is an indication of trend. And this is also mentioned in Wyckoff where he says, how do you detect a trend in an uptrend when the, up, when the down waves get bigger and or the up waves shorten? That is an indication of a, ch of a potential change in trend coming. And it's just logical, like, in an up wave, obviously uptrend, you know, the up waves are going to be bigger, down waves are going to be smaller, or the up waves are starting to shorten, which tells you that it's possible that the down waves now will score going to increase in size, changing trend. Anyway, long story short, it's really simple. Uh, just ask yourself, in an uptrend, what should the up waves and what should the down waves be? And you come to the conclusion that up waves should be bigger than the down waves and the, or the down waves should be shorter than the up waves. And how do you detect a change in trend in an uptrend? Is when the up waves start shortening and the down waves start increasing in length and time and or volume. That's enough for today. Um, maybe where the hell am I? Over here. Yeah, so keep going, keep going, keep going. Here, this was an early indication that there's something going on right here. I believe this is preliminary supply right there. And then finally, they did a climax after this preliminary supply, climax, and then turn. Market is exhausted, break it. There's the breakdown right there of this entire area. And now we are on, on the pullback, again, on a shorter time frame. On the other time frames, it's very clear. It's all up, 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 up. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for a pullback to test. Hopefully, this level all the way down here. That is a dangerous level for the shorts. Yeah. Anyway, I, I'm done. Thank you.